Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Cosmic Connection. This is your place to connect with the order and the beauty of the cosmos and to explore your connection to all of it. We're so happy you're here. Thank you for joining. My name is Amanda Poole Walsh. I'm the founder of Astrology Hub and I am here with Rick Merlin Levine. And today we have a very interesting topic to explore, which this was, this was Gail's idea, correct? I think it was. Yes. So Gail is yes. uh, Rick's longtime editor and friend and amazing, amazing woman. And so she's like, Rick, you got to talk about this, which we're going to be talking about, which is the astrology of family dynamics. So how you can see in the chart, the way the astrology plays out and what that tells you. And Rick's going to tell us a lot more. Very excited to explore. Go ahead. Well, I don't even know where to jump in. It's just such a wide topic. I, th I think really the, the place where we want to start is just acknowledging that we are not separate from our environments. Um, you know, uh, the, the depth psychologists had, had some of this right or have some of this right. And that is what happens to us in the first months, year, years of our life. Um, there are psychologies that are based upon what happens to us prenatally in utero and the birth actual experience that these are all fractals, um, microcosms, if you will, micro, um, uh, you know, slices uh, of the larger picture of our lives. And astrology takes a look at the moment we were born, and yet that moment occurs in a larger context. And of course, the primary larger context it occurs in is family. And something happens in family that creates a family of athletes or a family of military um, um, uh, heroes or, or participants or a family of criminals or, I mean, something occurs where we, where we look at the, we look at our siblings, we look at our parents or even sometimes more significant. We look at our grandparents because often things seem to jump a generation and there's something that is handed down generation to generation. And I used to say that my experience in astrology validates to me that there is something to heredity. <laughs> in other words, um, we, we all believe, or based upon the experimental evidence, that something is handed down from parent to child to grandchild to great grandchild or however you want to frame it but generation to generation to generation that creates a continuity in in that family and although we might attribute that to our genes or to um uh to dna um there's something resonant and something vibrating and now we get to astrology because as you know my understanding of astrology is that the universe is not a bunch of stagnant rocks, it's hum, it's vibration. And so if we are vibrating with a certain DNA buzz hum, it would make sense that we are then born in a moment that resonates to that hum. Um, there was a, uh, a astro an astronomer, yeah, still alive, um, who wrote a s several books back in I think back in the early late eighties and maybe eighties and nineties named Percy Seymour and, um, and Percy Seymour was, is a PhD astronomer who kind of stumbled onto astrology. I don't know his individual story, but it was like, wow, I've discovered astrology and a mechanism for it and it all works. Now, whether that's, whether he discovered anything or just like Columbus discovered America, astrology was doing fine before he discovered it as, you know, the United States or America was doing fine before uh, the Europeans discovered it. Anyhow, what, what he suggested 
was an image that has stuck with in, with me in my mind. And I don't know how much of what I'm going to share in the next two or three minutes is mine and how much is his. But I got the idea from him and I've been working with it because the his picture was um, that that the fetus prior to birth, as you're a mom, uh, I'm sure that you know that the actual cycle of labor is not initiated by the mother, by the host, in effect. It's initiated by the fetus. The fetus sends out a signal by emitting pitocin, which is an endocrine, um, uh, which, which is it's a form of pro, it's a messenger protein, uh, a form of of, of, of uh, messenger, and the endocrine pr um, pitocin actually goes into the mother's uh, system, and the mother then matches it with a like release, and so this endocrine dance of these increasing um, zaps of Pitocin. And if a doctor wants to induce labor, they, they inject Pitocin. That's what they use for, for speeding up, for speeding up a slowed or stuck labor. Not that I'm suggesting it. Um, but the image is that the prenatal fetal consciousness is like a surfer. Um, now you've, I know you live in Hawaii and whether or not you've surfed, you've bounced around on waves and, and what most people don't realize I've surfed a handful of times. I love the ocean. I'm, I, I would not call myself a surfer, <laughs> um, but, but I've been, I've, I've been on boards and I've bounced around in the waves. Most people will, who are surfers know that standing on the board and balancing well doesn't make it makes you a good surfer, but it doesn't make you an outstanding surfer. What makes you an outstanding surfer is knowing which waves to ride. Yes, there's two different skill sets, and and anyone who's done any surfing knows the whole social atmosphere of being on a board not wanting to look like the idiot who takes a wimpy wave and then everyone else behind you takes this amazing wave and says they had the best ride of their <laughs> life and you're paddling back out into that wave going, oh my God, you know. Um, so, so here's the image. Is the prenatal fetus is like a surfer waiting for the right wave to ride into this world. Oh my God, and, so great. And, 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 and yet we think that the fetus has no sensory mechanisms, but it's floating around in this Neptunian humming sack of, of amniotic fluid that is vibrating in its own resonant way. And, and the waves come and go. And as the fetus begins to develop, there's like, oh, is this what? And nope, that's not quite right yet. Oh, shit, did I wait too long? I got to go now or I'm not going to get that moon in Sagittarius. I'm going to be stuck with the moon in Capricorn and everyone in the family and all my genes have the Sagittarius energy. I got to go now. Oh, crap, that gave me a Virgo ascendant or whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm not judging any of these as positive or negative because they're all different depending upon the environment you're in. The picture I'm making or trying to paint is the fact that the actual birth moment is not an arbitrary thing and that the DNA that was contributed by the sperm from the father and the egg from the mother, as that comes together, there is a harmonization of these two different vibrational sets that creates whatever the self-reflective, self-aware, complex organic crystal that actually has movement and develops in a supersaturated solution of amniotic fluids. That's the way you grow a sugar crystal or copper sulfate crystal is you put lots of solids into a warm you know, mixture and then the crystal grows. Well, we're, we're crystals. That's all we are. We're complex self-aware crystals. Mm. that resonate just like a quartz crystal and a quartz radio resonates, we resonate. And when the cosmos are moving around, 
then we actually pick up on the frequencies that are resonant to us. And because they are never repeating, sometimes things work out better and sometimes they don't. And of course, then there's the whole interference, whether it's by cesarean or by inducing labor or so on, that complicates it. But, but any um, uh, birth room uh, physician or attendant will tell you that even when labor is induced, um, it's different with a cesarean, but even when labor is induced, there's still the timing of the ascendant that still, oh, it's still taking long. Oh, okay, now, now, you know. And so there's still something about that that goes on. And I, like many astrologers, have done many charts of people who were um, who know that their labor, that their mother's labor was induced, or know they were born by cesarean, and the charts still work. This isn't about that. So I want to come full circle now to the idea that families, just like individual charts, have a resonance. They have a hum. And, and before I get into specifics, which I do have a couple of examples for, for, um, for some specifics, I want to bring up a book, and I didn't realize until I reached for the book just now that the title of our um, day today is the astrology of family dynamics, or 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 the astrology uh, is that what it is, or the astrology yes. of family? Yeah. Well, well, Aaron Sullivan wrote a book many moons ago. I think this book was probably from the eighties. Um, it looks like um, it, nope, nineties. Uh, um, yeah, early, early, early. Where am I not finding this? Um, normally, yeah, 1996. Oh, and look, there's there's an inscription. Awesome. <laughs> it says from Aaron um, uh, to Rick. Um, family links could try could could be tribal libel. <laughs> um, all right. So, but this book, um, which is a very Scott Aaron's work, is very scholarly. This is not a how do how to do astrology, um, but in it, she kind of paints this picture of not not the fetus being self-aware as I just did. That's not part of this book, part of her work. Um, but she does make the case that there are some distinctive types of, of families. And I think that that what she offers is interesting, but I think it's much larger than that. It, it, and, and she says that there are families that are either open or closed. This is her basic, um, and it, and it's a bit overly simplistic, but it's a good working metaphor, I think. And and she calls families that are that are open there they they can be even disengaged. Um, they're Uranian energy. There, you know, they, there's a sense of freedom, a sense of independence. Um, there's a sense of 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 um, discontinuity in routines and, and so on. And there are families that do that. And within that context, there is an absolutely positive and an absolutely negative version of it and a complete spectrum of all kinds of possibilities from one end to the other. Um, she basically says that, that in its positive sense, um, a Uranian... Um, open family in the positive sense is one that's inclusive. It's vast. It encourages growth. Um, there's 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 a sense of, of of freedom of movement, and yet in a negative context, that same kind of openness can feel like like abandonment or even neglect um, or or uncare. I guess that is abandonment. Um, but you see, there's a whole spectrum. Are you with me here so far? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, she says, then there's another spectrum, and that is what she calls the close. Remember, the Uranian family, that's the metaphor she's using, is open. And the Neptunian is closed because it's enmeshed. Now, again, there's two ways, two extremes. In the positive sense, a Neptunian family is like emotionally supportive. It's a closed family. It's the family that, 
that that has all these activities and complex relationships and everything is tight and there is no world outside of the family um and and yet within the family it's safe there's no secrets um there's close sharing and and so this is a, a positive version of what Aaron calls an enmeshed or a Neptunian um, cl um, closed system. The negative side of that is being smothered. It's not having any privacy. It's, it's, it's having that family being so tight and you feel like, get me the hell out of here. And that is still, it's the same dynamic but she uses these two metaphors to paint what becomes a way more complex picture in the fact that this is not about one, one is better than the other. It's just that if you're a person who is born into an open family and your entire chart is watery and cancerian and 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 maybe even saturnian fear based or you know that it, it, it you're you're literally a pisces out of water <laughs> a fish out of water and 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 if it's not you or you or you everyone knows someone who it's not that well they may hate their family but it's more like how did I get here? And why am I the alien in this family? Everybody is the same except for me. So that happens. And that's important to understand because well, that's part of the um, astrology of family dynamics. And then the flip side of that is regardless of what the family process dynamic is. And again, we've looked at the open closed, but it could, we could take any planet. We could take a um, Saturn metaphor or a Venus metaphor and say, we have a family that, that everyone in the, in the family, you know, is um, all about love and beauty and they're artists. And that's the whole basis and fabric of the family. And you're born with a Saturn conjunct um, Venus and you know, and you want to be a mechanical engineer, and and you think that that your entire everyone in your family is just off in you know in rainbow and unicorn la la land. Okay, so maybe it is Neptune too. But but you hear what I'm saying? Okay, so what seems to be the norm though is that when we look at families and we do charts for lots of um, people in a family. Um, I've, I don't have any of the, the I'm going to speak about something. I don't have any examples of that in, in front of me right now. I, my own family, which I, which I know, but I, I don't want to lean too much on that. Um, <clears throat> but you can map generations of a family, um, even without, <clears throat> even without a time of day, you can map the sun and often the moon and other planets but with an accurate time, often we can go back one, two, three generations fairly easily um, with actual times of our parents, their parents, and for those of us who are so endowed, blessed, or cursed, children. <laughs> and in some cases, their children. So, Rick, I have a question because I had an experience of this just a few days ago. You, you know, I'm at home with my parents. No, no, no. no, no, no I, I, I will, uh, okay, thank you. Your your home is not there. You're at your parents' home. My parents' home. home. No, yes. I, no, I, yeah. so it's home because it's where, I, you know, my birth uh, yeah. town and everything. Yeah. And Gemini, Brett, and Anna came over. Uh, and Brett started asking my mom some questions. And he was asking her questions about her childhood, about her mother, about her father, about her siblings. And he was able to see such specific detail about them. I mean, things right. that most people don't even know about this family. He yeah. was like, hmm, there's something right here. And he, you know, he knew exactly where to dig. And it was amazing because he didn't have anybody else's charts except for my mom's. But in my mom's chart, he could see her father, her mother, her siblings, and probably more, 
although that's yeah. all he was talking about. So this is just fascinating how you can see all this just by looking at one person. Yeah. Now I'm, I just scrolled down through the, the, the chat and, um, and, and someone said that they have three generations of people with the same birth date. Wow. Not uncommon, not uncommon, but we'll get to that in, 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 in a few minutes, but um, uh, yeah, someone else just typed in my family, September 19th, this is Meredith, um, keep showing up three generations, also a crazy amount of Gemini's with peppering of Aquarians. You see, now that's just an air and we have this whole thing, um, of, of elemental basis, mm. um, that is often as significant, um, as the wiring in the chart. But let's first just talk about some things that are obvious. And that is when you um, look at your parents' charts or your children's charts, just one generation, you know, every everyone, well, most everyone has parents and or children, one or the other. And granted, there are some people who don't because they were adopted. They have no family of origin. They have no um, record of that. And yet even still, they grew up in a family um, and that has its own um, weight by understanding the chart of the people in your immediate family, whether it's biological or not. And yet if it's biological, you share some resonance, whether it's astrologically apparent or not. Why do I say you share some resonance? Because that's what DNA is. And you have a, a high um, overlapping of similar patterning or resonance in your DNA structure. And as we know, there is some continuity somehow between our astrology and our DNA. I mean, this is an, uh, um, a, a very deep dive that at some point in time, geneticists will you know, begin to untangle and go, look what we discovered. It has nothing to do with astrology, but, you know, the position of Mars on the ascendant, um, you know, makes some people have red hair or whatever. Um, incidentally, that was um, my first meeting of Judith Hill, um, who I know is, you know, uh, an, an astrology hubber, um, um, was a, a study that she did called Mars and the Redhead. Um, and it's a correlation between how... Mars people actually tend not only to wear red, but to wear red in their hair, whether it's given at birth or whether it's consistently red, reddened. Mm. Um, so one of the things that we notice when we just look at our parents' charts, for example, is we, we often notice that a parent's sun, moon, or ascendant is our sun, moon, or ascendant, or some combination thereof. Um, it's not uncommon at all, like, like is appearing now in the chat box as people are plunking in their, you know, um, uh, similarities. Um, Rianon just, uh, I'm the third generation with um, February 10, I assume that's February 10, although it could be a, a non-UA, non-USA, which would be October 2nd, but it's 2-10. Um, and, uh, you know, so so there are, uh, Christina just said, we have four generations um, on July 26th, and most are born on a 13th or a 26th. So um, um, <laughs> India, um, uh, India Burke, type George Bush Jr. carrying out the plans of Father George Sr.'s um, uh, uh, chart is this destiny, spiritual, evolutionary, cellular command. And the reason why I'm highlighting that high India, thank you for that, is that that's one of the samples that I have. I have the charts of um, uh, G, uh, I have the charts of um, George um, senior, um, G H W Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush and Barbara Bush. And I have the charts of Jeb and George. 
And so we'll look at those in in a little bit, or at least we'll, we'll I'll talk about them. Um, I probably won't bring the charts up. I don't want to go too technical, um, but the but but that's a good example. And we see those kinds of um, dynasties. And again, the title of of Aaron's book, um, which I'm holding up again, um, is Dynasty because it's basically um, it, what it does is it shows that astrology actually can reveal the patterns, the dynamics, um, the um, consistencies, um, the complexities of a family as an organic whole, <clears throat> and that the individual often is tapped by their chart to play out some destiny within a particular family, whether it's the first person ever to go to college, or whether it's three generations of um, people who have been involved in the military, and one of them becomes, you know, a five-star general and, and reaches some pinnacle of success within that metaphor, or, or whatever. Um, but um, uh, yeah, so that's basically the first run of this, is simply running charts of your siblings and of your parents and or your children, if you have children and have the, that data, because just looking at the charts and playing one of my favorite astrology games, which is a game that I learned to play with when I was working with my now um, deceased partner, Jeff Jower, um, Jeff and I used to play the game, what's similar, what's different. And just looking at the charts of you and your children and looking at their two charts next to each other, what's similar, what's different. And often it is as simple as um, I have the same birth date as my son, um, my biological son, not astrological son, but I have a different birth date, or date than my daughter and my son and I have a whole lot more connectivity than I do with my daughter or whatever. I don't have a son, just I'm not talking about me personally, just using it as an example. Um, but it immediately becomes more complicated because often you'll look at your two children and, um, and one of them will have their son uh, on your ascendant or, you know, the same sign, but maybe even conjunct. And the other one will have their moon lined up with your ascendant. Not something that you would notice unless you were an astrologer and actually running the charts. But you see these threads of continuity again and again and again showing up. And when they don't show up, it's as important as when they do. But often when they don't show up, there's other things that are significant that um, that actually bring this point home even more. Um, for for example, um, um, I, I was born with the sun conjunct Venus. My dad was born with the sun conjunct Venus, and his mom was born with the sun conjunct Venus. Um, my daughter has the sun and Venus in the same sign, which many people do. That's not, you know, but she has um, her Venus conjunct Uranus, but there's still a Venus issue. It's so, it's so close. So often things show up slightly different. You see, um, you, you, you see um, a, a um, one parent having uh, the sun conjunct Saturn and you see another parent having the sun square Saturn and one of the children will have the sun oppose Saturn, and another one might have um, the sun in Capricorn with the moon conjunct Saturn. Do you see what I'm saying? Is that it's not always, it's not always just the same birth date. It's the astrological energy that that twists and turns and shows up different, but it still has some resonance. And you're saying when it's not showing up, I, I know I have the audio echo. They, they're, they've told me. Can we try something? 
I could turn my volume down, but I'm already on headphones, so I don't okay. know what it could be. Well, maybe I just won't talk. <laughs> uh, when you talk, when you talk softer, you don't get it. When I talk softer, okay, I'll talk like that. There we go. I, okay, so my mom's mom and my mom and myself were all Capricorns, and then my daughters have no Capricorn. So you said it's all. It's also important what's not showing up. So one astrologer said, well, maybe because since my Capricorn is at 29 degrees, maybe it's sort of the end of the Capricorn era and the kids are now like bringing in an entirely new energy. But I just wanted to hear, you know, you, you mentioned what's not there is as important as what is there. Sure. And, and that could be, that could be one way of framing it. Um, another way of saying it is that, um, that you went through some sort of process some metamorphosis as as a human being and that you're raising your family in a different tradition or different way that you're creating that is not based upon quite the same capricornian stuff but my question would be um if they don't have any do they have any planets in capricorn no do they have saturn in their charts yes <laughs> well, uh, well, well. So the question becomes, what is Saturn doing in their charts, and how is Saturn integrated? What's interesting is uh, Madeline has Saturn in Virgo, and Sophia is a Virgo. Sophia has Saturn in Libra, and Madeline's a Libra. Okay, so that's one piece of interrelationship between the two of them, mm -hmm. but. Um, my question would be what aspects are ah. are in each of their separate charts because they have a relationship, a dance with Saturn. And it may not be, you know, it, it may not be, it may not feel excluding, and that's not the word, it, it may not feel alienated at all from the family. It may simply feel that they've, like they've integrated it in a different way. Hmm. Rick, can, can we ask a couple questions? A few questions came through that I'd love to see. Uh, absolutely. Okay. When you were talking in the beginning about the fetus actually getting that impulse, like, okay, here's the, the wave I'm going to ride in. Uh, Jamie asked about twins. Do Technically, do twins decide together? Well, okay. So I, I have a fair amount of experience with twins and triplets. And I always thought that twins were like the Doublement twins. Uh, for those people of, of an older age, um, that, that was an advertising thing for one of the, I think it was Wrigley Spearmint Gum or one of, but it was like the, the, they were two different, they, they, they were like always in a pair, the Doublement twins, those Doublement Gum. Um, and... And yet my experience with twins, even identical twins, um, I, 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 I know um, a, a pair of twins that have a um, Saturn-Mars con Saturn -Mars conjunction. And one of them um, is, um, is, is like very structured and very hardworking and 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 kind of serious but uh, oh and i think it's I, I think it might be uh trying venus or there's a venus in there but in the arts the other one took a career in the military saturn and mars it's almost like at birth when there are twins or multiple it's they're they're working with the same chart but it's almost like they make a tacit agreement you be saturn i'll be mars Mm. Where I'll lean on this aspect and play this one out, you play out that one, and so th because because what happens is that that the that the twins do what they can to differentiate. There's this individuality, mm. um, and um, and in the case of triplets, I mean one one of them was a military wife, the other one was a ballerina, and then the other one um, became a yoga instructor. Very, very different, but when you look at their charts, all these things are contained in obviously all the charts. They're born only a few minutes apart. Um, and so there is something that goes on because when we have a chart, um, you can look at a chart and yet 
the, the, there is, what's the word? Multivalence. There's so many ways in which the archetypes can play out um, that what happens in your chart if instead of emphasizing your Venus in the second house, what happens if you emphasize your Mars in the eighth house? Be, you become a different being. And so I think that with twins, that's often what it, what it is that occurs. At least that's my experience. I mean, that's so awesome. So it's almost that. like they have assignments. They have like chart assignments. I'm going to cover these ones. You cover these ones. Yeah. Or wow. the old or the older one says, this is who I am. And you don't have any room to be like that. Cause every time you are like that, I'm going to smack you down. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I mean, these are the dynamics of, of, you know, and I don't necessarily mean physically, but you know, these, these, positions of how they're interrelating may be worked out prenatally even. We don't know what happens without language. Right. Okay. And then this one from TR who asks, is it possible to not resonate with the family hum? So what if, you know, we're talking about families having a hum and a resonance. What if you're just like, whoa, I completely do not resonate with that at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I was once told by someone who's a very well-known uh, past life regressionist, but just does readings without, you know, this person didn't know me and said, I've not quite seen something quite like this, but it was like your, your soul was coming in on entry path and where it was going was taken and it went, Oh shit, I got to go somewhere. And you ended up in a family that was not, it was like, it was like a last minute decision. Now, I did okay with it, but I was certainly the one in my family that was different. Okay, a case could be made that I might have been different in any family. Um, but 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 I, I think it's very possible. It's very possible to be the person, <coughs> excuse me, who has six planets in air signs in a chart where no one has ever read in a family where no one has ever picked up a book, you know, where they're all outdoors oriented and they're great in nature. They're gardeners, hunters, fishermen. Um, they're wonderful, magical people, but they're totally not interested in intellect. And you come along with Saturn and Gemini and, um, and, and Mercury, um, you, you know, conjunct or, or trying Pluto with uh, Mercury in an air sign. And you're like all about books and wanting to learn and one and, and you don't fit in with your family at all. You sit down at dinner and go, I don't have anything to say to these people, yeah. you know? So it, it, all I'm saying is it happens, but two things. Number one, when we do the chart of the whole fabric of the family, we often can see that pretty quickly. And number two, even without the chart of the rest of the family, the magic in fractal reality is that wherever you look, the pattern contains the larger pattern, contains the larger pattern, contains the larger pattern. And therefore, we can look at a chart <clears throat> and there are different takes from different astrologers on this, but um, it is widely um, believed and there are some mm, colonial patriarchal rules that have been handed down in a, an astrology that is morphing as we are morphing in this day and age. Um, but it's But traditionally, the sun was the father, the moon was the mother traditionally the 10th house was the you know position of the career which came to you through the father and the fourth house was the home and family which came to you through the mother um and so someone with um a retrograde saturn in the fourth house that was square the moon and um and uh conjunct pluto might have had an overbearing family that they had to get away from in order to, to be able to take a breath on the other hand someone else who had um venus conjunct jupiter in the fourth house trining the moon um might have had a family and a mom who was totally loving and nurturing and so and so the point is is that even without running the family charts you can look at an individual chart, and although the one-to-one -one correspondences don't always work the way we would like them to do, like them to work, they often get us pretty darn close. Uh, for example, um, the third house is the house of siblings. 
Well, I guess the third house is short distance travel. It's the things that we forget about. It's unimportant communication. And, and, and what happens at home when we're hanging out with our brothers and sisters? It's noisy, but it's just, it's, it's like having three TVs on. It's, it, it's, it's not important. Although the rhythm of it is important. And with Saturn, let's say, um, in the third house, and especially if it's, let's say, square the sun or hard aspect of some, you may have a situation where, you know, all your, your two or three or four brothers and sisters, your siblings, all were totally tight and you felt excluded because that Saturn in the third house in some way um, changed the dynamic that you had. And of course, if you were then looked at the charts of all the siblings, then you might see, well, you know, here's here's what was feeding that. There's a difference of energy. And so what I'm suggesting is, is that we can attack this from two different levels. One is that everything is contained in everyone's chart. Secondly, we can then, and if you've not done this, all I can say is it's always a mind-opening experience. Go, you know, go to one of the many sites online, astrodeans, astro.com, astrotheme, wherever else, and run charts <clears throat> for your mom and your dad. And if you don't have a time of day, just run it for noon on the day they were born. And for yourself and for your siblings, if you have, and for your children, if you have, and for your grandchildren, if you have. And you may end up with three or five or 11 or they don't all have to be odd numbers. They just eight. However many charts you end up with, you set them all out side by side by side. Like I've done actually here. Um, Solar Fire lets you run multiple you know, um, wheels on one page. And you look at them and you go, huh, this person's son and that person's, you know, and you begin to play that game which we will do in just a moment with a couple of families. Yes. Now, do you include your spouse and or the, the parent of your child? Well, yes, but there's no genetic connection right. between you and your spouse, but there certainly is between you and your children and your spouse and your children. So yes, and whether it's biological or or even an active step parent, here's where it gets interesting and complicated because those dynamics play out. You know, it's like the how does this stuff work? I don't know, <laughs> but it does. <laughs> so are you ready to go to some examples? Um, yeah, someone said that Rick seemed <laughs> drunk today. Did you see that pop up? Who said that? I can't believe it just popped up. It was so great. I don't know what it said. Yeah, Something about. Yeah. For 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 the record, um, I have no alcohol in my system from today, yesterday. I, and no, you're I'm, not stoned either. Um, for the record, I actually have. This will probably surprise people. I haven't been stoned in twenty years, and I'm not saying I wasn't stoned then. Uh, but I, I, I no. So I'm I'm neither. I'm absolutely uh, neither. So I would say whoever typed that is you're projecting. Mm. <laughs> we know, we, now, okay. we, now we know who's, you know. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, so are you ready to look at some examples? Because I know you have those all teed up. Um, let me just make sure I got my notes. Um, yeah, I think that the, the thing when we look at the examples is that we are part of our um, families. We are part, it's, it's a family constellation. I mean, you know, it's, and in fact, um, I, you can do amazing work. Um, if you had an entire family or pick people to play out parts of your family and actually do positional constellation work, it's a form of astrodrama that you, you, com you combine um, family constel or, or, you know, constellation therapy with astrodrama and boy, it gets interesting. So what, what, one of the charts that I, I thought, who's, who are a chart? What, what, who, are, who is a chart? No, let me try this again. All right, maybe I am still in control. It, it's, it's that celery juice that I've been having. In oh, the you're high on it's, celery juice. It's, yes. it's, it's it, it fermented. <laughs> there we go. Um, who is someone 
that we actually know whether we know them well, we know who their siblings and parents are. And I ran the chart of G.W. Bush, Jeb Bush, their siblings. Uh, G.W. is about eight years older um, than Jeb. And their parents, George H.W. Bush and Barbara Bush. So I, I, so I have four charts on, on this page. And then I have a whole bunch of scribbles so that I basically ran the charts and looked at it. And I went, huh. And, and, and that's really where I picked up. I mean, um, uh, first thing I noticed, I mean, let me just start here and say that I have, these are all accurate data from Astro Data Bank. Um, and if you go to astrodatabank.com, you can get their data and it is validated. It's A, double A or B data, which are cl data classifications, meaning that it's accurate either from a birth certificate in hand, from the person themselves, or from, their, from a biography that had a source. So we have Barbara Bush, uh, who is a Gemini with a Capricorn moon. She's a Gemini with a Capricorn moon and Aries, I'm, yeah, and Sagittarius rising. Okay, hold that for a second. I'll say these again as we go in. I just want to get them on the record here. George Sr., H.W. Bush, is a Gemini son. So we have two Gemini parents. Um, like Barbara, um, George H.W. is a Gemini son. And he has a Virgo moon, but that Virgo moon is rising, but he has Leo rising. So, so, so I'm going to refer to them as mom, dad, Jeb, and GW, just as a matter of, of course. So mom and dad are both Geminis. And they both have other planets in Gemini. They're both serious, gem serious Geminis. Um, Mom has Venus and the Sun and um, Mercury in Gemini. Dad has Jupiter and Mercury and the Sun and Venus in Gemini. So they both got a pile of, of, of Gemini stuff. But Mom has a Capricorn moon conjunct Jupiter. A Capricorn moon, which is the the structure it's the it's the she was running that family on some level she that that capricorn moon conjunct jupiter is her optimism sagittarius rising she has the moon conjunct jupiter in capricorn and jeb bush is a moon in capricorn so we see an immediate connection between mom and jeb I'm going to actually cross these out as I go so I know where I'm. So, so we, so we have, um, so mom is a Capricorn moon, Jen, Jeb is a Capricorn, mom is a Capricorn moon, and Jeb is a Capricorn moon. They both share that Capricorn moon. Mom also has Virgo on her midheaven. And Jeb has Virgo rising. Now, the rising sign is the thing that changes the fastest. So there's, again, a connective tissue to that mercurial Virgo in. Remember, both parents are Geminis. And so Jeb's ascendant is mom's midheaven. Then it gets a little bit interesting because um, we already said mom has Mercury Venus and the sun in Gemini. Dad has all these other planets in, you know, in, in, in Gemini too. Jeb has a Gemini midheaven. And G.W. Bush has Uranus conjunct the North Node in Gemini. And interestingly enough, um, GW's Uranus North Node conjunction is conjunct mom's son. So there they have a conjunction of a slow-moving planet um, with the North Node 
which is not moving all that fast either, but it's lined up with mom's with with, with mom's Gemini sun. Um, so we begin to see there's some interplay here, um, but then we look at Pluto, and then it begins to get interesting because Dad. Um, let me just get this right. Um, Dad has Mars square Pluto. Mars square Pluto. Now, Mars square Pluto is a power-hungry force to be contended with. Someone who, it's not that they can't do good, but it's someone who will do whatever it takes to do what they think is good. There's that, it's kind of a, it can be a ruthless energy. Um, whoever Ruth is, and I'm not sure how she got into this, but, um, but, but, but so dad has Mars square Pluto. I'm looking for my notes where, the, okay. Dad has Mars square Pluto. Mom has Mars conjunct Pluto really close in cancer, family, iron fist, she looks, she's that Jupiter moon conjunction in Capricorn. She's the one that always looks, you know, like, like not so much smiling, but you can see that she's, she's good hearted. She's encouraging. And yet you can tell you, you don't mess with mom, you know, you know, there's that. So, she, so dad has Mars square, Mars square Pluto. Mom has um, Mars conjunct Pluto. Do we have a theme here of these two parents? It's some serious power hungry energy, you know, re ruthless, relentless. Um, and interestingly enough, George W. Bush, um, President uh, Bush, I guess they were both president, G.W. Bush has Mercury conjunct Venus conjunct Pluto. Mercury conjunct Venus conjunct Pluto. And so there's the, again that Pluto conjunction handed down again and again and again. And then we look at Jeb's chart and Jeb has the sun opposed Pluto. So you can see here that it's not about a particular sign. It's about, this is a family that has some serious power stuff going on, you know, and you either step up to the plate and play or you get lost in it because because chances are you just get tromped over if you if you if you can't if you can't match whatever that energy is from the parental level. Rick, when you look at family charts, do you find more of these significant aspects like significantly more significant uh, aspects to each other than say if you just put together a random group of four people? Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, so yeah. it's so you you see it very consistently that these, it's you wouldn't this wouldn't happen if you were just looking at four people. That yeah, in 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 my family chart, just as an example, again, um, older brother, younger sister, mother, father. No one has a hard aspect between Mars and Pluto. We're a family of you know wusses. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not right. Your family has a different hum. Let's just say it, it that a, way. Yes. It has a different hum. Yes. And by the way, Barbara Bush's Mars Pluto conjunction is very closely, up, it's in Cancer. It's very closely um, opposed her moon Jupiter. So there's really moon Jupiter opposed Mars Pluto. It's the, it's like, it's like she has good cop, bad cop going all in one person, mm. you know? And in some ways, bad cop, um, Mars Pluto side of it was projected easily onto dad because he had the Mars Pluto square. And so he could basically act and wear and, and move in the outer world with that same sense of that, you know, that power that may not have been as socially acceptable <laughs> for a woman to wear as a mom. Mm, you know, interesting. We, yes. Yeah. So that there is just one one dynamic. It's um, like she could play it out through her husband and her son. And exactly. Yeah. Her, her husband and her sons. Sons. Remember, right. Yeah. Because remember, Jeb Jeb has um, uh, the son opposed Pluto, which right. might indicate that 
he had a harder time with that energy and therefore was projecting some of it. Whereas GW stepped up and said, I own it. And when you look at the two of them, Jeb is the, is, is, is the softer, gentler one maybe, but it's interesting because GW is the cancer. And so you see some complexity here, um, but but here's the thing about emotions and about what um, uh, elements, and that is that GW is is a sun in Cancer, but he also has Saturn in Cancer, and so that and so it's almost like with Saturn, um, it's not exactly conjunct, but it's close enough that it's there. That although he is a warm and sensitive and family mama's boy in a way, that Saturn fights it. I mean, he's like he's he's the one that's gonna you know that's gonna stand up and act tough to um, to overwhelm or to overshadow perhaps um, that more gentler you know um, uh, a Cancer Sun, which may end up coming out as more controlling. But but here, let's take this a step further. Because remember, mom is a Capricorn moon. Jeb is a Capricorn moon. Mom is her Capricorn moon is conjunct Jupiter. GW's moon is conjunct Jupiter, like mom, but mm. it's in a different sign. Mm. So do, can you see mom's influence um, of one son has the same moon by sign and the other one has the moon in a different sign, but lined up with Jupiter, which has that same optimism and kind of like ability to take opportunity as it occurs, as mom apparently did. Mm. So, go ahead. Well, so Rick, before we go to the next chart, and I know you want to wrap, you want to do a few more things here, but if, can you give us a little bit of a prescription, like print the charts, start looking at sun, moon and rising or, and, and then what, what, I see that you're like crossing things off. So you're, you go through and circle things and. Yeah. You know, what, okay. what, what, what yeah. I did, what, what I did. And of course I've looked at enough charts that I just scanned them and said, Oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. Right. Oh, 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 look here. Um, let's see if I can do this backwards that this is Jeb's Jeb's son is opposed Pluto. I can't do this. I, I mean, <laughs> um, but, but, but I just began piecing it together and I just took net notes as I went along. You know, um, Dad and GW both have Leo rising. You know, so they're the ones that were kind of out front more. With Jeb, he has a Virgo rising. Mm. And so he was a whole lot more tentative in his public appearance, even though he had the power, was born into the dynasty, if, um, if you will, that his Virgo ascendant kind of didn't connect with um with um mom and that whole power thing but remember dad had a virgo moon so there was so he was the smart one and he kind of was still nurtured in that direction mm. but different ascendants mm. um both dad and gw have jupiter conjunct three planets remember mom has jupiter conjunct the moon or the moon conjunct jupiter dad has jupiter in gemini along with Mercury, Sun, and Venus. GW has Jupiter in Libra, and that would be a trine, so there's an elemental familiarity there. But GW's Jupiter is conjunct Neptune, um, uh, Chiron, and the Moon, meaning just that they, again, what we're seeing here is that they both have strong Jupiters. <laughs> Mom has Sagittarius rising. Can we see the patterns? That's all mm. we're looking here for. And when if, if I were doing these, I would run the charts, have all the charts printed out and I would make a list and, and just, first of all, I would make a list and just have the 12 signs in the Zodiac and have a little label of like, you know, you know, bill, you know, B moon, you know, uh, F sun, Fred's son. And I would just put these little notations in buckets so I could just see where people had similar things in similar signs. But then I would look at what are the major aspects in some of these charts and which ones seem to be repeating. Um, I mean, remember, um, mom had that Mars-Pluto conjunction in Cancer. Well, GW has a Sun-Saturn conjunction in Cancer. It's still 
a a powerful contractive energy, but it but it's a, a slightly different flavor. Um, uh, we can look at um, uh, oh one last thing here, and then we'll we'll go on and we'll look. Um, Mom has that Mars Pluto conjunction, right? So let's look at the Mars instead of Pluto. Mom's Mars is lined up with Pluto. Dad's Mars is square Pluto. Jeb's Mars is conjunct Venus. Problem, problem. I want to make love, not war. <laughs> 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 I, 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 can you can you see how that is such a standout? Mom and Dad both have Mars with Pluto, and Jeb has Mars with Venus. Mm. Enough. Very there. interesting. Very interesting. So everyone, you can see, just start to play with this yourselves. And actually, some people have already started it, and I love. Uh, Velma already found out. My dad and I both have Pluto conjunct North Node. What are the odds? She says. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. See, and that's interesting because Pluto moves very slowly, and the nodes move, you know, a, a cycle, you know, once every nineteen years, backwards. So even though it's a slow-moving thing, it's a generational indicator of her connection. With dad, um, here's a crazy thing. Um, my dad's Saturn is at 29 degrees of Leo, my Saturn is at 29 degrees of Leo, and my daughter's Saturn, yeah, we know this, and my daughter's Saturn is at zero degrees of Virgo, less than one degree away. And so what that means is that my daughter was born on my Saturn return and I was born on my dad's Saturn return. Now, again, these are generational patterns, but if you just took 20 people at random and their two parents, none of them might have the Saturn at the exact same place, a generation apart. Mm. So, you know, these are the things that, um, you know, like, like the, the moon uh, node, even though they're slow moving energies, I, I always look for the faster moving planets and the triggers, the ascendant, the midheaven, the moon, because those are the ones that, that the others have to do with just the time in our lives. Mm -hmm. But the faster moving points have to do with, I, I like to think it shows more of the fetus in control. Right. What's interesting about that uh, 29 degree Leo connection and then your daughter at zero degrees of Virgo is in her lifetime, uh, Regulus, you know, Regulus being aligned with 29 Leo changed to Regulus being aligned with zero Virgo, but you all because have that of alignment. The, because, of all the, because of the procession of the equinox, all the fixed stars um, from Earth's point of view um, look like they're moving ahead about one degree, well, exactly one degree every 72 years. Mm -hmm. So yes, a, a fixed star where it is today in 72 years will be a, a degree down the road, so mm. to speak. Okay, well, we have a we have a special guest who's going to join us. We, we have do. we have Jamie McGee who has worked for Astrology Hub for about four years, and she is the one who supports this broadcast every week. Also, Anne's broadcast every week. She's the one who's running the Astrology in Your Pocket with Anne. She a lot of you have probably engaged with her via support at Astrology Hub, and we were talking about this last week, and she started to bring up some of her family dynamics. And Rick was like, let's use your chart next week. So where is she? Where is she, Jamie? There she is. And she's actually <laughs> the one in control of getting her on and off the screen. <laughs> I she am. Is. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Well, this is, this, is, this is fun. So what I'd like to do is similar to what I did with GW's chart. Um, I just want to get the charts out there and then I'm going to ask you to tell us what you told me last week when you were saying in my family, and then I'll pick up from there. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So um, we have Jamie who is um, a Scorpio and Jamie was born with the sun conjunct Uranus in Scorpio. 
which is why she's crazier than she seems. Um, <laughs> she has she has a moon in Gemini, which is why she can shuffle all these different boxes and 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 things with the necessary words wrapped around them with 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 a great deal of um of, of ability and incidentally that moon in gemini in jamie's chart is squaring saturn and so we'll hold that thought because saturn is is going to be a, a piece in the piece in this and her ascendant is is uh, sagittarius and and there are three planets in sagittarius so jamie is a sun scorpio moon gemini which i think when I've seen the sun in Scorpio, moon in Gemini, we've never had this discussion, Jamie. But to me, that's kind of like ice. It's kind of like ice skating on lava. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> as long as you keep going, it's fine. But as soon as you stop, you sink in deep and hard and burn. Yes. And I don't mean burn bad. I mean you can burn good, um, but it's intense. So that's that. Mm. But that moon likes to keep things in motion. Right. All right. Um. Your husband, Lem, is a Pisces sun, a Gemini moon. Oh, we got two Gemini moons and an Aries rising. Am I right so far? All right. You have, you have two kids, right? Yes, I sure um, do. Older daughter, Grace. Younger son, Jay? Correct. All right. Uh, daughter, Grace. Um, is an Aries moon, and mm -hmm. that connects with what? Her father's rising. All right, so so dad, Aries rising, Grace, Aries moon. Yep. We'll hold that. That's, that's one. I'm going to actually um, delete these as we go. Oh, and on top of that, though, before we move, let's also note that Grace's um, Mars, which is the ruling planet of Aries, mm -hmm. is lined up with Uranus on her ascendant. Yes. Which now reflects back to mom's Sun-Uranus conjunction. The sun, Your Sun-Uranus conjunction shows up in Grace's chart as her Mars-Uranus con Mars -Uranus conjunction, but it's mm -hmm. on her ascendant, which is basically... Her, her rising, her appearance, and their so, father's son, yeah, and their father, and their father's that, and that's right because the father is, um, dad is a Pisces, and dad is a Pisces with three planets in Pisces, and Grace is that Pisces rising with, um, with, with Mars and, um, and, and Uranus. So what we have is Grace's moon is dad's ascendant. And Grace's ascendant is dad's son. Correct? Yes. That's that's where we start here. Um, we'll come back. We have other things on that in a moment. But then we go to Jay. And Jay is an Aquarius son, um, actually with four planets in Aquarius. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, and, and incidentally, Jay's um, Aquarius planets are opposing Saturn. And okay. so there's something here about, okay, you can be the weirdo of the family, but don't be too weird. You know, there's something here about reining that in, about that Saturn holding that energy back. And, um, uh, but, but we can go on from there. So he is, he is a son in Aquarius. His moon is in Sagittarius. Do we know anyone who has anything in Sagittarius? His moon is on my rising. Okay. Yeah. So his moon, um, and and actually, it's even more intense than that, because his moon is conjunct Pluto, right? And and, and actually, it's Pluto that's closer to your rise to your ascendant. So his moon Pluto at late Sagittarius is conjunct your Sagittarius rising. Yes, and he was conceived at the end of a Pluto transit for me. Got it. Dead on. Got it. Yep. Okay. So we got that piece nailed. All right. So let's, um, oh, th so the, the, 
are, are there any other things that you can that you, that that stand out to you? And those are the things that you said to me the other day. Well, yes, um, Grace's mid tenth house cuss is her mid heaven. Yeah, her mid heaven is Sagittarius, Sagittarius and I'm the ascendant. one in my ascendant, and I'm the one that pushes her out into the world. And my son's mid haven is Aries, and his father is the one that supports him and pushes him out into the world. Um, and then Grace was born the other Saturn transit. She was born her Saturn's twenty three. Or my no, my Saturn is twenty three, and I had her at twenty three. And our Saturn, I show up in her chart in her fifth house too, yeah. where her Saturn is. Yeah. So one of the things that I noticed um, talking about there's some Saturn stuff, some Neptune stuff, and some Chiron stuff I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. So first of all, Dad was born with Jupiter conjunct Saturn. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, roughly every 20 years, that's the conjunction that we just had last December. Um, you know, dad was, um, was, was born with, um, um, Jupiter and Saturn conjunct. Jay was born with Jupiter and Saturn square. Mm -hmm. See, now these are the things that we don't notice at first, but there's a dynamic about, how you take responsibility, how you take opportunity, how you work things through. And with dad's chart, with that Jupiter and Saturn in the same place, that those two things kind of are always, I've used the word peristalsis. It's always expand, contract, expand, contract. Mm -hmm. But Jay has a bit of a problem with that, of knowing sometimes when to go and when not to, or when to, when to grow. And what's that Kenny Rogers song? Uh, um, when to hold and when, when to fold. Not. That's a you theme know, song in our family. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, but that's Jupiter Saturn. Yes. And 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 that's not you, although your Jupiter and Saturn are both in Virgo, they're wide apart, but it, they're mm -hmm. there. And um, and Jupiter and Saturn um in uh, Grace's chart are non-existent as far as their connection to one another. Mm -hmm. This is, this is a dad, this is a father son thing. So when you say it's our family song, it's really their song. You sing it too, but Grace looks at you all and go, why are you singing that song? Exactly. Um, all right. But now let's look at the fact that you, although you're a Scorpio, a fixed sign, you were born with the sun lined up with Uranus. Mm -hmm. Uranus is the planet that we associate with Aquarius. Jay has four planets in Aquarius. He doesn't need Uranus conjuncting anything because he has four planets in Aquarius. All right. So there's the mom son piece, or at least one of the one of one of the pieces there. Um, back to Saturn, <clears throat> sibling stuff. We already talked about how. Dad has Saturn conjunct. Um, so Dad has Saturn conjunct Jupiter. Uh, uh, Jupiter conjunct Saturn. Um, we also talked about how um, J has Saturn opposing his Aquarius planets, so that so that his Saturn is opposing his Sun. Mm -hmm. Again, this is Dad stuff, but rewired. Interestingly enough. Grace has Saturn, but it's being squared by the moon, mom. So yes. in some ways, it's like it's it's like you're the hard ass in Grace's life, and dad's the hard ass in now. This is not uncommon because of gender stuff, but mm -hmm. it's interesting that Grace's um Saturn is squared by the moon, Jay's Saturn is opposed by the sun, and dad's Saturn is lined up with Jupiter. I can encourage them and stop them at the same time. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, here's another one just about the siblings, which is interesting. And here's where siblings gang up on parents. I love this because Grace and Jay both have Mars opposed Jupiter. Mm -hmm. Totally different signs, totally different charts. But out of all of that complexity, they both have Mars opposite Jupiter, which is this dance with how much energy do I apply 
because it's so easy for me when I get enthusiastic to overdo, to overextend, to to say to take on more than I can do. And of course, then we ask, well, where does this come from? You know, parentally, then we go, well, mom does have Sagittarius rising, you know, duh. And uh, mom do also has the, you know, her Jupiter conjunct the North Node. Um, and, and so we begin to see the, 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 the fabric of how these things appear, but it's interesting that the two of them have Mars opposed Jupiter. Now, um, the last thing I want to mention here, actually there's two things yet, is that, um, you were born with, oh, hold on a second. I don't have this right. Uh, yeah. You were born with not only the sun lined up with Uranus, but the sun was also closely opposed Chiron. Hmm. Sun opposed Chiron in your chart. Grace was born with, remember now she has the Saturn square of the moon that we talked about earlier. Hmm. Well, her Saturn square moon is such that her Saturn's opposing Chiron and the moon is square Chiron. So you have the Chiron opposed the sun and she has Saturn and the moon both in hard aspects to her Chiron. And there's something here now about the family dynamic, the history. I imagine you could go back to your mom and see the some sort of original wounding, something that has to do with relationship or you know the place in life or something that, that you've inherited and that whether you like it or not, you've passed mm -hmm. along to your kid. Not that these things can't be worked with and overcome, but when we look at this Chiron piece, we look at Jay's chart and Jay was born with the sun conjunct Chiron. Mm -hmm. And so we don't see, um, you know, a, a, you know, again, my, my family certainly has its share of crap and other stuff, but there's no one in my family that has the sun or moon conjunct or square Chiron not a judgment as to whether anything is good or bad. It's just in your family, you have the sun opposed Chiron. Grace has the moon and Saturn opposed in square Chiron. And Jay has the sun opposed, um, the sun conjunct Chiron and opposed Saturn. So we see this whole thing about responsibility. What's the, what's the unspoken message in the dynasty of the family that hands down something about your responsibility in life? It's, you know, you, this is what you can do. This is, or this is, this is, it's, it may not be verbalized, mm -hmm. but there's something there about that, that goes on, that, that goes down, down the road. Anyhow, there's more, but that's enough for now. Our goal wasn't to overwhelm anything astrologically, but it's time for your feedback. What did, what did you learn, and what is uh, uh, what, what do you think about that? My feedback, I think that's fantastic. I loved it, and I in the Chiron point, there's healers comes. It's, it's a, and a lot of times people think of Chiron, they think of a wound. But there's also this aspect teacher, of teacher, teacher, teacher. Uh, Chiron yeah. was Chiron was the the mentor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. And that and that shows up in a lot of um, in the, in the family lineage, whether you're teaching through experience or story, or you know, a lot of different ways, and in the responsibility of it, in the very karma is a popular word in our house. Because you know, with my son having this Saturn opposed son, he knows that he has no mercy with karma. Karma is always watching. And he's also, when you look at the mood of the charts, he's the most fixed. The rest of us are really mutable when you like lay him out. Even with my fixed son, he outranks me. And so yeah. he's that one personality that kind of, when you mentioned that he stands at that different angle, he's the one that's going to push the why. Like well, why? I and he has four, I mean, he has a grand square. He has uh, Mars in fixed Taurus, Saturn in fixed Leo, Jupiter in fixed Scorpio, and that pile up of Chiron, Mercury, Sun, Neptune in fixed Aquarius. Um, that's seven planets in fixed signs, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and in some ways, you know, as time goes on, um, you know, he will in some way become the anchor of the family. Right. You know, he's the one that will hold that, you know, he's got that drop of super glue. Um, you know, even though he like his sister, you know, can get over enthusiastic about something with the Mars opposing uh, Jupiter. 
Um, and his intensity with the moon conjuncting Pluto, obviously, mm -hmm. You know, the moon conjunct Pluto from a birth standpoint is the most interesting to me of all the aspects because it's the fastest moving of the celestial objects, not counting the ascendant or midheaven. They're not celestial objects, but it's the fastest moving and the slowest moving. And so there's this juxtaposition of bringing the intensity of the deep and powerful cycles into the moment. Um, I imagine that, let's see... Um, Jay is what, 15? He's 15. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine it's getting to the point where you're realizing it's not fun to argue with him. Oh, it has never been fun to argue with him. Oh, no, no. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I understand that. Yeah, uh, he is the last word child for sure. He has, it doesn't matter if it's just a grunt, he, it has to be the last. And I would imagine with his cancer rising, that his last word is often a grunt. And his last word is often not even necessarily said because everyone knows what he just said, even though he didn't say it. Right, exactly. And he, in that whole defending or the anchor, his cancer rising comes through because as the baby, he's very, he's, he's always held tradition high. He holds us to tradition. So even if there wasn't, you know, Santa, there was. We go through I the tradition. Got it. <laughs> but I, I, now I find it interesting. He, and here's another thing just to look at when you're looking at your family. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad are fire rising. Mm -hmm. Two kids are, are water. water rising. Right. Now it turns out that mom and dad are both water signs. Mm -hmm. By son, you know, you're a Scorpio and dad's a Pisces, but you appear you know, you interact, your feet are on the ground in a fiery, active motion way, and they are both here in a watery attachment. But of course, Grace is a bit tricky because she has that Mars Uranus so close to her ascendant that even though she's watery, you know, she's got matches in all of her pockets. Definitely. Yes, she does. So, okay. Yeah, it's fascinating. That's how family dynamic, I mean, it, it's way more than that. The point, though, is that anyone and everyone can run charts for their for their family, for their immediate family, and just see where do you fit in, where don't you, what's similar, what's different, mm -hmm. what's similar, what's different. That's the game to play. And, um, you know, especially if there are people who are really close, whether you're a twin, or, you know, um, or you just, just some person... Uh, for me, in my family, the person that I was closest to, although she didn't live with us for most of the time, um, for a few weeks every year or two, and then once for about two years, my grandmother, that's my my paternal grandmother, lived with us. She was the only person in the family that I thought was sane. <laughs> you know? She's an Aries with a Cancer moon. I'm an Aries with a Cancer moon. I didn't know that, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Jamie, thank you so much. Yeah, that Jamie. Was Eric, that you. was fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Super fantastic. Thank you. You don't even uh, have to ask anyone to make her disappear. She's in charge. Exactly. She, exactly. she disappeared herself. I love what Meredith said. Wow. If this is a preview of Rick's upcoming class, I can't wait. Oh, and that's the is, thing. It's the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to be doing in that class. Exactly. So that is the perfect segue for us. You could be Jamie, all of you, any of you could be Jamie getting your chart read by Rick during our August chart reading extravaganza, <laughs> which we definitely haven't landed on that name, but I just, I'll use any excuse to say it. And that is- uh, that's a a that's a Ju Extravaganza is a definite Jupiterian word. Oh yeah. It's just fun. Go to astrologyhub.com slash charts and get on the wait list if you're interested in more of that. So obviously it won't be necessarily a family dynamic focus, but Rick's going to be doing a similar thing where he's looking at, at some at one of the students' charts and reading one, it. One of, one of them each week. One of them each week and reading them and then telling you why he's saying what he's saying. So uh, the wait list for that upcoming August experience is up. You can go to astrologyhub.com slash charts. Rick, is there anything else you want to say to wrap up our discussion on this dynamics? And I mean, I know basically we have the, the uh, action item to print the charts, to start to look at what's similar, start to look at what's different. See if, I think it'd be cool to even see if you can come up with a, 
with a hum or a theme, like you were saying with the bushes, the Mars Pluto, like that, that's like a really strong theme for that. Yeah. What's the story of your family? What's your story of you in relationship to your family? And how does the astrology of the supporting cast actually support your story or not support it? You know, I mean, there are things in astrology that's, for example, Saturn retrograde in the fourth house. Um, historically, it's said that that's a person that has to move far away from home so that they can be free of that uncomfortable environment. Now, does that mean that everyone who leaves ho home has a Saturn retrograde in the fourth house? No. But if you're looking at family dynamics and you see that in a couple or two or three different charts, something's going on here. In other words, I think when we look at family dynamics, the thing to understand is that, yes, we are born as part of a cosmos, an order, a beauty of the greater whole. But we are also born as a part of a local constellation. And that local constellation has a, um, a, tr a trans-temporal resonance. What do I mean by that? Trans across temporal time. That, that resonance of our DNA, um, of our genetics, of our hum and the family that we're born into, that there is another hum. And that if someone is lucky enough to have um, a family tree where they can go back four, five, six, eight, ten generations, which many people can and many people do, um, even just knowing someone's birth date, not even where and, and, and time of day, is enough to begin to paint a more you know, in-depth picture. Um, but all it takes is, 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 is two generations, you know, you and your parents or you and your offspring and, or you and your sibling to begin to look at this and explore it. Well, I know what I'm going to be doing tonight at dinner. So I'm here. My, all three of my brothers are here. My parents are here. This is the perfect time for me to be diving into this and my and, daughters. And when my phone rings, I'm going to know who's calling. <laughs> 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 exactly. Rick, you won't believe this. What do you think this means? Yes, yes, exactly. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for going on that journey with us. We tried something a little different this week, which was really fun. What? Did, did you tell them that um, for the chart, what are we calling it? Chart reading extravaganza? Well, we don't um, have a name yet. But yes. that, that there is a wait list? Uh, did, you, yes. did you get? Oh, I, okay. I, I did. Know. Yes, astrologyhub.com. It's okay. Astrologyhub.com slash charts is the wait list. And we will be opening enrollment soon, but you can get on the wait list and you'll be the first to know. And this is the last few days of the inner circle open. So we open enrollment for the inner circle twice a year. We're closing doors on Sunday. If you're someone who's been like, hmm, what is this inner circle membership thing? I'd like to have a consistent place where I can come and learn from different astrologers every single month then you might want to check out the inner circle. You go to inner uh, astrologyhub.com slash inner circle 2021. It's an amazing, vibrant community. We'd love to have you in it. And yeah. there's no contract when you join. So you can always just check it out and see if it's right for you. Rick's been an inner circle guide once or twice. I think just once a couple of years ago. Yeah. Once. And yeah. then we, and then we started. Oh, well, yeah. You've, you. you've, yeah we, we've done other things. <laughs> yeah. Lots of things. All right. So you can check that out too. And thank you for being here, everybody. It's been so fun to do this, Rick. This was awesome. Yay. Amazing. I love, I love thinking about this constellation of the family and this, the like signature of the family and, and even, even taking some of that, what you brought in in the beginning about, is this an open family or a closed family? And is it expressing the positive aspect of the open or the, I don't know, negative aspect of the yeah. open? And the, and the other example you gave too of the closed. When you first said open, I was like, oh, that's my family. Then you said, then you described them. And I was like, oh, yeah. maybe it's yeah. not. But it's really interesting to- And, and remember that the, the book um, Dynasty is by Aaron Sullivan. I think it's still in print. It's an Arcana book. I mean, it's a, a brilliant publishing company or publisher. I don't even know if they're if, if they're still publishing, but it's it's a good book. Thank you to everybody who's wishing me uh, to have a great time with my family. You all are so sweet. It's it just like this is my uh, extended Ohana family for sure. Thanks everybody for being here. Thank you for being a part of our community, and thank you as always for making astrology a part of your life. We'll catch you same time, same place next week. Thanks, everybody. Rick, thank you.
Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all.